Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. Here we are, January 10th, uh, 5 a.m., day two of 21 days of prayer and fasting. Good morning to everybody as you are coming on this morning. And uh, as we're waiting for people to come on, good morning, Joel. That's the first name I saw pop up this morning. Good morning, Mr. Joel. Glad to see you this morning. Uh, so grateful for so many. Uh, yesterday, uh, Lizzie and I figured out there were there were about 71 computers. Uh, many of you are sitting and watching with people together. So probably over 100 people participated in morning prayer yesterday, which is amazing. So thank you guys for being a part. Wendy, Lauren, Kathy, I see you guys uh, coming on this morning. Glad to have you. Melanie, glad to have you with us this morning. Miss Alana, very proud of you for being with us this morning as well. Uh, so good morning, good morning, good morning. I want to remind everybody as you're coming on, Amy, Peggy, Tim, see you guys all. Uh, as you're coming on, make sure you have your journal. If you don't have a journal, uh, good morning to my lovely wife. I see you there as well. Uh, good morning. And uh, if you don't have a journal, you can grab it one of two ways. One is you can get on our website. And on the website, under 21 Days of Prayer and Fasting, there's a place for you to download uh, that. Also, uh, if you do, uh, if you want a physical copy, you're more than welcome to call the church office. Swing by. We'll have one printed for you if we don't already have some copies available here for you. So uh, good morning, Pat. Miss Judy, see you guys all there this morning. Uh, Shane, glad to have you with us, my friend, praying for your move. Um, but I want to want to jump in this morning and, and really... Um, uh, I'm I'm excited about something uh, that that we're going to talk a bit about this morning because oftentimes we don't put these two concepts together and yet it is so 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 powerful. So uh, good morning, Miss Madeline. See you, Kathy. Still have more folks coming on. Marvin, good good to see you this morning. Um, I want to I want to I want to talk first of all, um, and and hopefully you have your journal. If you have a journal, we'll jump right in there. Uh, we all love the feeling of the word boldness, right? Uh, a confidence wells up inside of you. You may have felt that before. Uh, we begin to feel part of something or we feel seen. Sometimes we don't feel seen in this world for, for, for many of you. Boldness, boldness. Uh, but one concept that we don't always associate with boldness is repentance. Boldness and repentance. I'm going to want to put those two concepts together this morning as, as we uh, spend some time with the Lord and pray and ask him to move in our lives uh, and in our community. <clears throat> so let me go to your journal, excuse me, and read you. have got a couple scriptures there in your journal. Psalm 24, 3 through 4 says this, Who may ascend to the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? And then it answers the questions. The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. Boy, that's a little convicting because um, I go, wow, do I really have clean hands and a pure heart? But let us remember, for those of us who have Jesus, it is the blood of Jesus that makes us righteous, not what we do. So we're, we're grateful this morning. So our boldness comes from repentance. Our boldness comes as we acknowledge uh, the sin in, in, inside of our lives. Psalm 32 and 5, then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will, conf I will confess my transgression to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Pretty amazing. The scripture talks time and time again about boldness, catch this, being preceded by repentance. That boldness is preceded by repentance. The truth is plain and simple. Boldness for Jesus begins with repentance. Boldness in your walk today begins with repentance. Boldness in, in, in walking into your office space today, in your school today, uh, in wherever it is that God has called you to be today. Maybe it's the grocery store. Uh, maybe it's homeschooling the kids. Uh, whatever that is, walking in boldness today begins with Repentance. For many of us, it is our guilt. It is our shame that is weighing our hearts down. That's weighing our minds down. It's weighing our souls down to the place where we're not bold. We're not bold because we're walking in that. Jesus' ministry began with a direct personal call for people to repent. And let us remind ourselves what repent means. Repent means I just do a 180. I'm going this direction and I repent 
that means I go that direction, right? That I just, I turn away from, it, 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 to repent means to turn away from your sins. And, and, and in, unless we understand the gravity of our sin, I don't think we can grasp the gravity of salvation, right? Until we grasp the depth of our sin, until we come to this place, and, 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 and I think about what we read on Sunday and, and, and what Paul said, what a wretched man I am. Right? He, he grasped that, but we don't stay in that place because we understand what Jesus has done for us on the cross. Later on, Jesus ascends, um, and, he, and he's going to give the disciples the, the Great Commission in, in Matthew 28. And we see how their repentance and faith gave them the kind of boldness that we crave. Right, Since they had hope, they were bold and proclaimed Christ. Uh, they knew God was their helper, and there was nothing man could do uh, to them. God, God didn't give them a spirit of fear. Uh, many of us struggle with fear, and I wonder if it's because we haven't repented. We haven't been honest about our sin, so our sin is still holding on to us, and we're operating in that fear. They had the boldness to ask the Lord for wisdom. We all have sins that we continue to struggle with, every single one of us, but it's often easy for us to ignore it and look at the faults of other people. Come on, somebody. Man, is it easy to look at somebody else's relationship and figure out where it's jacked up. Uh, it's a whole nother ball game to look at my own scenario, right? My own life, my own heart. If we truly want to be bold for Jesus, we will begin on our knees in humility and repentance of our sins and view the boldness and the access and the confidence that we have with endless gratitude. I think worship, worship from, from our standpoint and our humanity, some of the deepest worship stems from understanding the gravity of our sin, understanding where we really stand, and then what Jesus has done for us. And, and so this morning, as you spend some time with him and as you kind of reflect in your journal, can I encourage you just to be real and raw about your struggles? Uh, what's amazing is God knows you're not perfect, and he knows you're not going to be perfect. That's why Jesus died on the cross. So let me read you a verse, uh, a couple more verses, and then let you spend some time this morning. Um, take some time to repent. Take some time to be honest with God about the struggles and the, and the sinful behavior, attitudes, things that you have going on in your life. And then let his boldness come in. Let his boldness come in because he has given you freedom. He has, he has given you forgiveness. His mercies are new every morning. But boldness is preceded by repentance. Let me read from Hebrews 4 and 14. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith that we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weakness. Aren't you grateful for that? That Jesus walked on this earth and he knows what it feels like to be tempted. He knows what a struggle it is. But we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, right? We acknowledge and repent and acknowledge our sin. We then apply the blood of Jesus to our sin, and then we approach the throne of grace of confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Man, that's a, that's a place right there that each one of us should almost take time uh, to just stop and worship take time. And so walk through that today. I added a, a link for you today of a worship song that our team is actually going to do on Sunday morning of a, of a song called Prepare the Way. And it, it, of course, reflects on John coming and preparing the way. But if you want to prepare the way for Jesus to bring revival, revival in your heart, revival in your community, revival in, in your neighborhood, your school, your workplace, it's going to come because we are a people who are repentant. We are people that, that find ourselves saying, I, I lay all things before you, Jesus. I acknowledge I can't fix any of this myself, but this is on, on, on you. you. You took it all on the cross today, and I can walk out of my house today in wherever direction that I'm going 
with boldness, not because I have anything to bring, not because I have anything to share, but because of the cross, because of your death, burial, and resurrection. Today, I will repent of my sin and walk in your boldness. Man, let me pray for you today, and then you spend a little time um, first in repentance and see if God doesn't bring some boldness to you today. Father, we are so, so grateful, so grateful that you love us, so grateful that you don't leave us in our sin, you don't leave us in our struggle, but that every day, every, every morning, your mercy is new. And so we come today in repentance. We come lying, laying our sin before you. We come humbly acknowledging our, our temptation and our struggle to give into the temptation in certain areas. And we apply your blood, Jesus, to our sinful behavior, our sinful attitudes. We ask for you to bring healing in particular areas that we might today walk in boldness, not because of anything we've done, but because of the righteousness that you give us through the cross. Man, we, we love you. We praise you. We worship you today. And I can't say thank you enough, Jesus. We thank you. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Man, take a little time. Start with some repentance. Let the boldness of God take you through this day that you might fulfill what he has in mind for today. Man, I love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow morning.